about, I believe, 20 or 22 men here. For Canadian community groups, it's come to this. Cots and mattresses laid out on the floor, even shipping containers soon to be transformed into makeshift homes so asylum seekers can have a place to sleep. We are trying to assist the agencies, the shelters, the government, because they were not ready for this. Just this one church is housing 46 newcomers and there are more arriving all the time. So the church has outfitted this bus to house six people overnight while the temperature allows it before the winter arrives. But as you can see, it's really only a temporary solution. In Toronto this summer, some newcomers had to sleep in the streets with advocates warning more forced migration globally and Canada's housing crisis are combining to squeeze all groups providing emergency shelter. It's not a Toronto issue, it's a Canada-wide issue. It's impacting every city. Calgary's Centre for Newcomers warns Ottawa didn't properly plan before opening the door to more migrants. This 55-year-old man landed in July from Kenya. We agreed to conceal his identity as he claims asylum here. How does what you heard about Canada and what you have the experience you've gone through for the past month how do the two compare I would say Canada is a great town it's a very nice it's a very nice country at the back of my mind I'm not foreseen coming out here and probably staying for that long without you know probably getting a job or housing or something like that 70,000 asylum claimants have come so far this year and the government is pledging an extra 200 million dollars Charities like Matthew House Ottawa say they can handle the influx, but need help. Okay. Let's help them increase their capacity, and we can deal with refugee claimants arriving in the country without any problems at all. Advocates fear stopgap measures won't hold up when temperatures drop. Thomas Dagle, CBC News, Vaughan, Ontario.